Hey everyone, welcome back to Max Stack Motorsports. Today we're back here with our GTI build. So as you can see, we're going to be doing some ducting today. And also I'm hoping to relocate this oil cooler. Um, I'm just not too satisfied on how I did it the first time, which really bugs me because I'm big on doing it right the first time. Uh, I just think it's, it's too low. And uh, when I do eventually end up lowering the car down, uh, I'm a bit nervous that it's actually going to be smacking off the ground or if I hit a curb um, on the track or whatever. So what I'm hoping to do is we're going to try to move this oil cooler over here and try to do some welding and hopefully have it kind of placed in the lower grill. Now, if there is no room for that, I actually went out and bought myself a smaller oil cooler. Um, I did put the half inch to dash 10 AN fittings in there already with uh, some pipe dope. So that stuff should be all sealed up. I did that a couple days ago. So we'll see how that goes. But anyways, as far as our ducting is concerned, so this is what I've done so far. Now, um, this is the first time I've ever done this. I've never really seen any tutorials on it. But uh, what I essentially did was I went out and bought myself. This is a two inch so two inch hole saw with a, a metal a metal blade and we sporadically put some holes in it now if you take this this bumper support off you'll see that you can kind of see right there actually that's perfect so you can see how there's already pre-made holes in here and then if you look kind of on the inside there's like a gap here right there that's solid so i didn't want to put a million holes in it just because you know I didn't want to to kind of mess around with the structure as much even though like even doing this like it's already been weakened now you know I mean I'm not going to really recommend or tell you guys that you should do this I'll leave that up to you but for the track purpose I like to at least get some sort of ducting to our radiator here so yeah so two inch hole saw kit I went out I put uh, four in the center here and then I put two kind of on the outside now that's not going to really do too much i ended up putting this one here for the oil cooler and that one to kind of give a little bit more air to the stock uh, intercooler but um yeah that's just kind of i mean it is what it is with that and then these little guys i don't know i was just kind of messing around just trying to see if i can kind of cheese whiz it a bit to save some weight but realistically um yeah it didn't really do too much but anyways um so yeah once you have these holes in uh, make sure you kind of deburr them. You don't want to, you know, cut your finger on it. And you also don't want, like, I know it's going a long way, but this uh, little metal piece here, like, you don't want this type of stuff. If you guys can see it, there you go. You don't want this type of stuff, like, just flowing into your radiator or finding a way into it, your intake. You know, it's kind of just the little things. But anyways, so we also went out and got ourselves a secondary bumper. Now my oem bumper that came with this car was in really good shape there was nothing wrong with it i just didn't really want to start putting holes in that if i do eventually part the car out or if i sell the car um you know I me mean? when i'm done with it i like to kind of keep it as original as possible so yeah i spent like 30 bucks and got myself a reflex silver i think that's reflex silver um yeah i got myself a secondary bumper that we're going to be using for the track and that's where our holes are going to be so again, um, obviously you're gonna have to take your bumper off. This goes with any application. Um, you know, what I mean, there's tons of tutorials on how to do that for the MK4s, as you guys know. And then, you know, what I mean, with the bumper support, again, you're gonna want to find the best places that you can, um, you know, what I mean, picture the airflow going through your car. So right here, again, we have these little holes that are already pre-made on the inside, and I kind of just line them all up with the outside. And what I'm kind of hoping to do is that the airflow through the front bumper will go through our rad. And then when we put our secondary hood on, that's our, our hood that came with the car, but we also went out and got a secondary hood. We're gonna have some sort of ducting on that. And the goal is to have the airflow through and then up and out through the hood. Um, yeah, like I said, this is the first time I've really done this. I've never seen many uh, videos and whatnot on it. So we'll see how it goes. So yeah, let's get started here. I'm gonna just take this off, this uh, this reinforcement bar off right now, and I'm going to place it into the bumper 
on where the bumper should line up with it. And from that, we're gonna be kind of taking a marker from the back of it and measuring our holes for our bumper. Okay guys, so you can see here now, I have the bumper support off. And what we're doing now is just kind of lining it up the way it would sit with the bumper on it, on the actual car. You just take a little marker here. Now, if you got like a different color, it'd be great too. But um, yeah, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of put a hole, or sorry, um, put the marker in the hole and center it the best I could. That way when I get my hole saw out, uh, all I have to do is just line it up with the, um, with the thing centered and we should have our holes. Now, I don't think I'm going to do the ones over here on the side. Um, I'm not sure yet just because of where it is on the actual bumper, it's a little bit angled. And um, you know, I mean, I don't want it to really look that bad as well as um, start cracking on the, on the curve of it. So I might just focus only on just these four in the center, which I think should be relatively enough for, for what we're doing. So yeah, let's, uh, let's start marking them up and then we can get our whole saw kit out. So we have our marks in here now, you can kind of see there they are, they are kind of hard to see. I would use like a paint pen. So if you guys have like a white paint pen or a yellow one or whatever, just something with a little bit more color, makes it easier. But at the same time, make sure you guys take off. This is your license plate mount. So make sure you take that thing off. You don't want to shred this thing to bits um, because you know, I mean, at the track, you could always like, you know, I mean, go into the track, you can put your license plate on and then it's mounted and everything. And then when you get to the track, this takes like two minutes to take off. It's not hard to do. So again, take that off. And then here's our drill with our hole saw. So this is just a two inch uh, hole saw thing here. Um, again, this is, uh, I think this one I bought was for metal, obviously for doing our, our um, excuse the train going by, but the metal uh, bumper reinforcement here but this will obviously work really well on this plastic. So yeah, let's make our holes and then we're gonna try to mount everything up just to kind of mock everything. And then we're gonna move, o move over to our next, uh, our next goal for today. So you guys can see now, there's our holes. There you go. So see how that's perfectly aligned. Unfortunately, the bottom ones, like I said, um, they're not bad, but um, they're not perfect the way I wanted it to be. But we do have our lower grill still. And it does actually look pretty cool. Now these are just the holes from the license plate holder, which is not a big deal. I might even just tape these at the track. You know what I mean? I know it won't add too much uh, downforce or anything like that, but at least, uh, you know what I mean? Maybe when they do the wrap, they can cover them over. And uh, yeah, there we go. So it looks good. Again, this is why I went out and bought um, kind of a crappy bumper that doesn't really mean much to the car. That way I don't have to hack it on, uh, on the original one. But yeah, there's our there's our ducting holes. So um, yeah, what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna move this oil cooler and I don't think it's gonna fit where I wanna put it. So what I actually did was I went out and bought this little guy right here. So this is, a, I think it's pronounced Durali or Dural. But uh, yeah, so this is just a little, little oil cooler here that uh, the boys at Performance Improvements had in stock. So I, I picked one of these guys up and then I already put in our half inch MPT to dash 10 AN um, adapters with some pipe dope. And then this is gonna sit, not on the outside, but on the inside right here. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna take the bumper back off and then we're gonna do all our measurements for this. And then we're gonna get the welder out and make um, kind of the same thing that I did with this oil cooler. I'm gonna have two metal bars come down, nut and bolt, and then we're gonna extend our lines if I have to. Um, that way we have our uh, an another oil cooler going on or our, our new oil cooler location. So you can see we have a bit of a mess going on here, but um, I took the old oil cooler off and unfortunately I did have to um, cut the old fan wiring, but you know what, I could always leave that wiring there for something in the future if it's for maybe a smaller oil cooler that I put in for maybe the power steering or if I want to put some like uh, funky lights in like I do have that LED uh, underglow kit that I will be putting on but even if I want to like put a light bar kind of underneath here for for something cool I, at least I have that that circuit ready to go so I'll just make sure to to heat shrink both both wires there and that way they can't touch each other as uh, if it gets energized for whatever reason. 
But anyway, so yeah, um, steel bar, again, similar to what we did with uh, the first oil cooler location. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna cut this up. And then I got myself, uh, where'd it go? Here we go. So my paint pen, which I found after I should have used it on my bumper. But um, yeah, so I'm gonna mark out a spot somewhere along here and then cut this bar, um, take off the reinforcement, and then I'm gonna get the welder out and then weld my two little spots for what I need. And then same thing as before, I'm gonna use the same hardware, the uh, nuts and bolts there. That should hopefully sit in like that. And then with our lines, that 90 right here on the longer line should be enough to reach there. And for the secondary line, I have some leftover dash 10 line that I, uh, that I kept from when we did this the first time. And then thanks to JRP, I went out and grabbed myself um, some new 90s. Uh, you're gonna need, to make the extension, I'm gonna need um, two union adapters. So I already got those two male uh, dash 10 union adapters and then a couple end fittings. And then, yeah, that should take care of at least getting the oil cooler into um, a more reasonable spot. Hopefully that goes as planned. And then, uh, yeah, today we should be able to um, drain the oil, make sure I prime this uh, oil cooler up, and then I can also put in our oil pressure gauge as um, the sending unit that I snapped last year. My new one came in, and then hopefully I got some good oil pressure going on. Now we have grinded off our spots where we're gonna do our welding. We have our two little metal pieces here. This is what we're gonna use to bolt our new oil cooler in. And then, for the bumper, I did have to modify it just a wee bit. So again, this is why we go out and buy kind of a shitty bumper that we don't really care about that much. So you know how on the inside of these little grills, they have this um, kind of piece that sticks out on the passenger side, or sorry, on the driver's side, we removed that. And then we also shaved down, um, this is, the, this is the, the front lip, I guess you could say where the inlets are at the bottom so we kind of shave that down so pretty much we did this so that we can run our lines um, i did some test fitting that way our two an lines can fit in there no problem and reach our oil cooler and then this at the bottom um just because it sits flush with um i'll show you guys actually that part of of the front lip there kind of sits flush with here and because they're kind of like on an angle i couldn't get the oil cooler to sit like all the way down so I kind of like took that angle out that way there's nothing here now which allows me to have this baby sit just like that there's our two little mounts for our oil cooler I'm just gonna clean them up give them a little scrub and then um, I'll probably cut them down a bit that way they're not all the way down into the bottom of the lip just to kind of cut them to size but they are mounted um, the bumpers upside down right now but uh, yeah, so let's get this baby back on the car. We got our reinforcement bar back on. Um, I couldn't find any paint, so I'm a little bummed out about this. I'm probably just gonna give them a little bit of a wipe down, but I really wanted to spray paint these. I know it's got all the, uh, what's called, tags on and stuff, whatever. But um, yeah, anyway, so that's on there. And then we went ahead and we added our secondary um, extension for our dash 10 a inline so if you guys watched the video when I installed the oil cooler the first time you guys should know by the now on how to install the fittings so that's on there now which actually oh my gosh it's the first time I checked it out that is perfect for where it has to go so what I'm gonna do is I'm um, I just have my drill here I gotta just kind of bore this out a wee bit and then find uh, a nut and bolt that's gonna fit this because the other ones don't Alright guys, there we go. Again, I apologize for uh, the neighbors mowing the lawn every time I film a video, they mow the lawn, which is fine. I understand that. But uh, yeah, here we go. So here's our oil cooler relocated in a new spot. And that should fit nice. I might have to modify the actual bumper again, just a wee bit. But um, yeah, look at that. Don't judge. That's not uh, black paint. That is permanent marker, baby. So. Um, I don't think that's gonna work, but I had it there just to kind of measure some stuff out and I figured I'd cover it over. But yeah, anyway, so this is where the hard part is, is I need to mount the bumper now to, to make sure everything fits. And then I need to feed these lines through that tight little area. And then with my A-in wrench, I'm gonna have to 
find a way to tighten the fittings. At the same time, because I'm gonna be doing the oil change, I need to prime this up with oil. So um, how I'm gonna make this work, I think, is I'm going to disconnect right here at this new union that I just put in. And I think I'll put some oil into this. That way it's primed up and then I can slowly fill the lines up. And then that way, when I do the actual full oil change, there's no air pockets in the system. So, but so far guys, it actually looks pretty good. Um, I would, would have liked to have a, a bit of a bigger oil cooler, but um, you know what, for the space that I have right here, this is actually perfect. And this is just, uh, yeah, this is just a, what's called the little five row guy. So nothing uh, too crazy, but that's what it looks like right now. So yeah, let's get it filled up with oil, put our new oil pressure uh, sending unit in, and then we can fire it up, make sure everything works. So you can see, where we kind of took that notch out. So if you look over right here, get in there baby, there you go. So this little piece right there, we took that out on this side, which allowed us to fit our, um, our lines, our dash 10 AN lines right in. And then look at that. And then we notched at the bottom here, as you can see. So there's just a small piece there, but that should, uh, indent itself as uh, as it goes on but yeah it's perfect man that looks so much better We've got our holes everywhere and now we don't have to worry about any sort of clearance issues for our oil cooler this old one here smacking off the the bottom of the track or the curbs or even put it on the trailer so that looks awesome as i'm waiting for the oil to drain here we're going to be putting in our sending unit so this is our new new south new new south um, sending unit. Um, and if you guys remember last year when I put the old one in, I reefed on it too hard, end up snapping the brass, unfortunately. So um, yeah, we're gonna be putting into our sandwich plate here. So if you guys can see that Mishimoto sandwich plate, that's for our oil cooler, as you guys know. And what I'm gonna be doing is just threading this in, like like as you see it right now. No pipe dope. This is a 1 8 MPT. This right here, this plug, is a 1 8 MPT. So what I did last uh, last time I did this is I, I thought you had to install the 10 millimeter adapter. Um, I didn't clue in, but that 10 mil adapter is actually for this uh, heat exchanger. So if you wanted to do that, you can go into the heat exchanger here. But for the Mishimoto um, sandwich plate, it is already a 1 8 MPT. And New South uh, does say that you don't have to put any sort of a uh, pipe dope or Teflon tape to seal these threads as they are tapered. And this actually acts as a ground for the for the sensor. So that's uh, that saves me a, a little bit of work. And then our wiring is tucked in here. So last year we, we ran all the wiring from um, this location into the car, into the gauge. The gauge obviously didn't work because we had no sensor to go with it. But uh, if you guys remember then that, that, that pigtail is in here and that should connect to this guy right there, direct, direct fit. And then we're gonna add some of our, where did it go? Ah, there it is. We're gonna add some of our wiring loom this is from DEI, but um, yeah, I'm so excited to actually get this thing on there. Thanks uh, to Das Parts for getting it in so fast this year. Um, you know what I mean? I broke mine just as I was about to go store my car, so it's nice that uh, I can start the, the year off right. Okay, there we go. So, oh my gosh, that's actually on there. Um, got as tight as I can get it without overstressing it. So when I start everything up, hopefully it doesn't leak. Um, if that's the case, I'll have to tighten it obviously a little bit more, but uh, thank God that's on. I've never been so, so ginger with uh, with a, a, some sort of fitting or a sensor in my life really, but I really don't want to have to do this again. This was so much easier when I had the entire like rad assembly off, but that's finally on there. Now you can see this is the wiring that we already ran. That was already sitting in the wiring loom, so that's in there now. We're just gonna cover it up with the loom and then kind of clean this up a wee bit put in some fresh oil, change our oil filter before we do that. And then, yeah, guys, we uh, should be able to fire it up. And then we just have to make sure that I prime this um, oil cooler of ours that we just put in. And then hopefully that will be it for today. So we're in the GTI now. Um, so yeah, I just primed up the, the new oil cooler as well as, um, you know, I mean, changed the oil filter and whatnot. Just filled up with oil. So uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's give it a start. 
hopefully this oil pressure gauge should work now and um if that's the case and it's a it's it's a good day for sure and then we'll get out and just kind of take a look around just to make sure there's no oil leaks um again make sure you go over like all your fittings you know what i mean uh nut and bolt everything just to make sure as well as kind of give everything kind of a bit of a rub down if you can um you know i mean sometimes oil filter if you guys pre-fill them they kind of get a little bit of spillage so it's always good to kind of to like rub it down make sure there's nothing like really leaking from it that way when you do start your car and you do see some of the leaks at least you kind of know where it is and it's not just an existing one so yeah let's uh let's fire this thing up it's a little hard for me to get in this thing now because it's on uh our, on the uh, big jacks here but uh yeah i'm just gonna move forward battery's connected and um yeah let's hope for the best here so again our gauge just moved there which is a good sign uh, i'm just gonna adjust these and uh, yeah, let's fire it up. Okay. There we go, baby. Yes, sir. We're up and rolling. So that's a good sign. I think that's uh, uh, decent oil pressure. Oh, yeah. I give a little bit of a hit there and it, it, it crawls up a bit more. But uh, yeah, so right now I'm just going to get out. Everything's in neutral. We're good. We're good. We're good. And uh, yeah, let's just make sure there's nothing uh, leaking. Adjust some stuff. All right, guys. So there you go. So everything's uh, yeah, up and running. Everything looks good so far. I'm really happy how that uh, that oil cooler turned out. Actually, um, yeah. So right now I'm just gonna put the the bumper on and. Um, yeah so i really appreciate you guys watching another video this is more of a more of a vlog thing today I, i'm you know i mean not trying to really teach anyone um uh, with today's video just kind of getting up to date with everything it's been so long since i've been able to actually work on the car so very happy to get back to it and uh, again don't be afraid to uh, subscribe comment any sort of criticism is always acceptable for sure again make sure you follow us at max Tack motorsports on instagram and uh, take a look at our sponsors we got some new sponsors such as uh, rice rocket powder coating uh, prince and co their uh, their apparel company uh, kingsman customs brampton adrena garage uh, as always we got das parts and and quality details so yeah make sure you guys give them a shout too if you guys need anything especially if you're in the the toronto area um but if not uh yeah thanks again guys and i uh, hope to see you guys soon take care